Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah Dawn, and today we're gonna to talk about a sexless marriage because I have coached a lot of men who have been in them and have also helped fix them. So in today's video, we're gonna give a little bit of a backstory of how potentially this might happen because there's a lot of different variables. It is not just one. It could be one, it could be many. So if you're watching this, you're a male or a female, you probably are going to be able to identify with a little bit of what I talk about. But towards the end of the video, I'm gonna give you some tools, some things to think about on how to fix this because it is fixable, but both parties have to be invested in wanting to fix it. So the biggest things that I hear when it comes to a sexless marriage and what happens is typically, there's a variety of things. So when you take away the spontaneity in a relationship, when kids come into the picture, when your needs and your priorities are put on the back burner and kids take all of your time and attention, when you're tired, when your health starts to decline, when someone potentially has gained a little bit of weight in their older age, so you're not as mobile, you don't feel as sexy, you don't, you know, you don't present in the relationship as confident, and that can start to wear down um, on the sexual attraction that the other person feels. You might have gotten into the relationship based off of kind of this dopamine bonding. It was hot and heavy in the beginning and then the seven year itch happens when all of that dopamine kind of wears off and you've kind of gotten the most out of the, those chemicals and you have failed to really truly oxytocin and pair bond with one another. And this can happen when two people have uh, some broken attachment issues, some avoidant attachment issues and some anxious attachment issues. So, you know, in the beginning, there's a lot of fireworks, there's a lot of things that keep the relationship going, but towards the middle and towards the end of it, I hear a lot of people will tell me that they just didn't feel that spark anymore, they just didn't feel it, their partner, they were attracted to their partner, and they didn't know how to get over it, that over that hump, um, because typically, a lot of people who have anxious or avoidant attachment styles um, are unfamiliar what it feels to be in a safe relationship, so it tends to feel boring, it tends to feel um, too stable. They like to, you know, so typically someone will cheat to create some sort of novel experience within themselves or within the relationship. So I'm, I'm covering it all. I'm covering all the things that I've heard. I've covered um, a lot of things that I've read. Uh, another thing too is that women, especially as a woman myself, I want to give you some perspective on what women will say and what women will tell me in their circles. And that is basically that a lot of women will feel that they become their a mother to the man, very uh, nurturing, and will start telling him what to do, will start taking on the masculine role. And men don't necessarily understand this because they go to work and they come home and the, the wife will complain that he's not doing stuff around the house. And I understand that if you've taken that role and you are a housewife and you've decided to stay home with the kids, that that's something that you are going to contribute to. You're gonna look after the house. But after a while, it starts to get old when he just walks in the door, slumps down on the couch, watches TV, drinks a beer, kind of that 1950s Leave it to Beaver style. Women don't necessarily want that anymore because everyone's really tired uh, everyone is working. There's a lot of people that are that are not able to be in single family homes. So it's really difficult to to strive to have this balance, this work life home balance. And so I think men sometimes tend to want to stay in that 1950s role, but women are looking for more help. Women want more emotional support. They want you to carry some of the mental load, so to say, or so to speak. And what I hear what women will tell me is that they're, they're, that, that desexualizing will happen when a man um, becomes like another child. And then of course there's hormonal changes, there's pregnancy, there's menopause, there's decrease in testosterone, there is you know men who suffer from ED. There, there's just so many reasons, gosh, I, I I, when I started listing these out in my head and my notes, I didn't realize that there are so many reasons, there's so many things that are working against us, but there really are. So let me help you kind of provide some, some perspective on how to shift some of these things. First, you have to recognize that it is a problem. First, you have to bring it up to your spouse or bring it up to your partner and say, 
our sex life sucks. This isn't working. We either need to fix this and come to an agreement on what we value in the relationship and how much we value it, this particular part of the relationship. Because I see a lot of men who will just kind of pout around the house or they will get in a mood and they kind of feel, or they've talked to their wife about it many times, but nothing is changing. They feel defeated. They feel as though no matter what they do or what they say that their wife isn't listening or they just don't bring it up and they literally just don't talk about it in, in a hope that it will get better. It's not gonna get better unless you don't talk about it. It's not gonna get better unless you don't bring it to the surface. It's not gonna get better unless you decide to go to counseling or go to a sex retreat or do something to change the narrative. So that's really the first step is bringing it to the forefront. Now, I um, have read a book called Mating in Captivity a, a long time ago, and it was by Esther Perel. I speak about, I've spoken about her on this channel before, but her work is fantastic. She studies affairs and she studies what happens to couples when they have affairs. Like what is the breakdown of their relationship? And what she found were three different things that really contribute to the demise of a, a, a sex life, a married sex life. And that is the lack of novelty. And what I mean by that is I don't mean like orgies. I don't mean people just having experiences that are crazy novel experiences. I mean, just anything novel, you taking a trip or doing everything, everybody just gets in this rut and starts to do things that are very kind of plain and simple. And, you know, you drive down the same path to work every day and you don't do anything different. So a lot of people get comfortable in their relationships and fail to create any type of novelty in their relationship. The next one is um, spontaneity, right? doing something that you've never done before or keeping the relationship alive and like you were dating again. The reason why sex is so hot in the beginning of a relationship is because you don't, you don't ever know when it's really going to happen. You don't know, you know, if you see the person and where you're at, if it's going to happen in public, is it going to happen in the car? You know, it's, it's, you kind of are learning each other and it's new and there's just things that are more spontaneous within that dating relationship. So creating that type of spontaneity back in a relationship that's been, you know, seven, nine, 10 years is really important. And then the next thing that she talks about is seeing your partner in a new light. And what I mean by that is, is somebody could go to the gym, get in really good shape and they start to look at their partner differently. Or let's say you're, um, you learn a new instrument and you learn a new hobby and a spouse starts to look at you differently because they, you're kind of unlocking this new part of yourself that they've never seen before. And I, you know, there's a, a theory that some people say the way to make your <laughs> way to make a woman, you know, wake up to you is to make her jealous. That's a little bit of a dark psychology hack that I wouldn't necessarily uh, promote, but I think that there is a sense, anybody has a sense of natural jealousy or natural curiosity when somebody goes to the gym and like starts to take really good care of themselves and starts to, you know, trim down and, and just start uh, taking more, they have better self-confidence. I think that's what spurs the feeling of, oh, wow, like what's going on over there? What, what's he or what, what, what's he or she doing? She's really like trying to take care of herself. I think it might work in both ways, right? When you, when you take an active part in not letting yourself go, it reignites this passion within the relationship. And then the third, yeah. And then, and then taking up an instrument, doing something new where your partner sees you and goes, wow, that's a, I have a whole new appreciation for them. It's very sexy. It's, um, it's powerful. It shows that like your growth mindset, you're learning, you're doing things to make yourself better. I think that over time, these are all things that kind of fall by the wayside when it comes to relationships. And these are just a few examples of some, some of the things that you could do. And I'm not saying, you know, novelty, you could go to sex clubs. I mean, you can make it as crazy as you want to, as you want to make it. You know, you can get her a new toy. You can come home and bring her a new lingerie. Like there's so many different things that you can do. But the last thing is really, um, 
This is the hardest thing for people to hear and the hardest thing for people to change. And that is the codependency that we fall into when it comes to being in a relationship. Women and men both have the tendency, again, this goes back to our childhoods, we want to become safe within the relationship, right? We want to feel that safety as soon as possible, men and women. But as soon as we get that safety, sometimes we tend to resent it because it takes away the passion, it takes away the excitement. So as much as you want to do everything with your partner, as much as you want to feel that safety within the relationship, sometimes being separate, doing separate things, creating distance within the same house together, you know, really doing activities and then coming back together to talk about them, having separate lives is how you keep that relationship fresh because if you're doing everything together, if you have become fused at the hip, if you are codependent, if you can't go anywhere without, without your partner, then where is the, the space in between where you get to miss them? Where you get to say, oh, what are they doing? I wonder what's going on with them, right? So there's a lot of things that you can do, but the first thing is you need to have a conversation about this plain and simple. And then from there, you can come up with a plan to try and get yourself back on track. I hope this was helpful. I'm sorry if it was hard to hear. Um, of course, I am available for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Please click the link in the description if you would like to book a call with me. I have helped tons of men and women get through this, couples. Uh, I would love to be a conduit to your growth. Thank you. If you found this valuable, please subscribe and I will see you on the next one.